the hypothesis that all the participants are new to semiotics and that's why I'm beginning with the basics of the semiotic models. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to request all of you to put your sound on mute mode, mic on mute mode. Uh, after certain slides, I'll uh, open question and answer so you can uh, put your questions uh, in the chat box which I can answer so that we don't have to disturb other participants while uh, in the workshop. So yes, the first one before we move, there is small knot. Uh, this uh, pictorial material used here are taken from various websites purely for academic and research purposes. There has been no intention of economic benefit out of it. There can be pictures, videos, slogans that may contain nudity, harsh language or ideological implications. The participants are considered adult and academically open-minded for such realistic presentation of the material. After all, the material comes from real sources, which are also the representation of real life. Thank you and happy learning to all of us. So let's begin. Uh, can we all know this particular symbol? Okay. Uh, basically it is an apple, half bitten apple, but we see this symbol as a logo of a particular product. And that product is technologically advanced product. And not only that, the product is also associated with high prestige. So this simple logo has multiple meanings. Okay. And this kind of interpretation, this kind of understanding of the signs and the words that we are using, okay, is the basic content of the study of semiotics. Okay. So that is our concern here. What is semiotics? Uh, this is one of the major semioticians, Umberto Eco. He's also very famous as a novelist. So he defines semiotics very accurately. The discipline studying everything which can be used in order to lie. Because if something cannot be used to tell a lie, conversely, it cannot be used to tell the truth. It cannot in fact be used to tell at all. Okay. So the discipline that studies the symbols that we use to tell a lie is semiotics. Because all those symbols are also equally important to tell anything. Even if you want to tell the truth, we have to use those symbols. Okay. And even if we want to lie, we have to use those symbols. Okay. So in, in this, a, a, in this case, your signs are very important. So what is it? Semiotics is a, a study of signs. Okay. So here, what is a sign? So anything that stands for meaning, okay. that is the sign. Anything, anything what's whatever. Okay. It could be um, a picture, it could be a word, it could be facial expression. Everything is a sign. I'll, I'll have to start the recording. Record on this record to the, just a moment. So, Suppose there are 40 participants. Close and share, remote control. There are two messages. Not audible. Do I have to start faster or louder? Am I audible now? Hello? Yes, Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So here, uh, what is a sign? Okay, because semiotic studies sign. So whatever is meaningful, whatever gives some meaning is a sign. So in this language, our words, they stand for concepts. They are signs. 
in our life there are logos that stand for prestige that stand for quality like we believe that oh woodland shoes will be very good they are very good in quality so this is the woodland the name stands for quality okay in our society we do a lot of rituals okay which stand for some uh, religious practices some traditions if you don't if you don't follow those rituals people will consider us uh, let's say untraditional okay so all those things that we do okay like when we meet someone and we say how are you that is also a sign because by saying how are you we are trying to convey the message that we care we know that person and uh, we are trying to maintain our relationship uh, dr kiran the call is unable to hear uh, could you please uh, rejoin because everybody else is able to hear so probably there is some rework and it will work okay so here there are two more logos i'm using the first is uh, for phantom this is uh, the logo of the production house called phantom films this is production house run by anurag kashyap so their ideology is that like phantom they also get from the rich class and they provide it to the uh, poor class so in terms of good content okay. so that's why their ideology uh, with this is associated so the fur there was a sound if you watch in cinema uh, they write fur and they say fur for phantom okay. so this is a sign of quality cinema if you see this particular logo before the beginning of the movie then you expect that there must be uh, something unusual in the movie okay something uh, something very important uh, can other people listen to me dr kirandeep is unable to listen to me uh, yes sir yes sir we are listening so there's sir, there's some issue with is audio yeah, there is a possibility that the network is unstable uh, the third one the logo here is times of india times of india as we all know it's a newspaper and the logo exhibits two elephants and there is this uh, particular line the laid truth prevail which is the primary role of any form of media that they should bring truth to the people okay so that is the uh, role of the media houses now uh, there are two elephants which signify the royalty at the same time elephants are also symbol of memory it is believed that elephants have very powerful meaning powerful memory and this is what the newspapers also do they document the things happening around us and they develop the we try to communicate we try to express ourselves with the help of these logos they could be linguistic logo logos like language they could be pictures they could be uh, sounds they could be expressions okay so all these types of signs are studied in semiotics now how does it start so semiotics uh, was actually started by uh, hippocrates somewhere in uh, bc era okay uh, this is uh, hippocrates uh, his time is 460 to 377 bc that is before christ not before corona okay so he is the founder of western medical science and he first used the word semiotics in this spelling okay in greek which is the study of symptoms he was uh, a medical scientist so he was concerned about the symptoms of illness okay that there are certain symptoms that means there is this illness so a semion the term that they have used is a mark or a sign okay anything that implies about something 
It stands for something other than itself. Okay. Now, this was Hippocrates, but after him, it was Plato who took up this challenge. How things stand for other things became the prerogative of philosophers around the time of Plato. Okay. He suggested that signs were deceptive things because they did not stand for reality, but as idealized mental approximation of it. If we remember uh, when Plato talked about banishing the poets, he said that poets, whatever poets are doing, is the imitation of an imitation. It is not real. So the same idea is applied here. He said that signs are deceptive. They don't stand for reality. They stand for our concepts, our mental images. Okay. It doesn't go into the reality. Okay. So this is where uh, the actual discussion about uh, the uh, signs uh, start. But actual semiotic as a field developed very, very late. That is somewhere in 1913. Okay. It was uh, uh, Ferdinand de Saussure who first started talking about semiotics, but he used a different word because he was doing it in French. So here we have Ferdinand de Saussure. This is uh, his name, Ferdinand de Saussure, and he used the term semiology, not semiotics. Now Saussure was teaching in Geneva. He was teaching philology, Sanskrit, and linguistics. But he thought that these theories of teaching language, philology, and interpretation is outdated. Because in that theory, you only talk about past. You don't talk about what is happening right now. And that is why what he did is he developed his own theory of looking at the sign. He gave his idea of the sign. This is his concept of the sign that there are two parts. There is a signifier, there is a signified. Okay. We will discuss the sign uh, later. The other person was this. He is called Charles Sanders Peirce. He was philosopher, logician, and mathematician. And he was working in America. And he used the word semiotics, which we follow today. Okay. Now, Peirce um, and Sashur, both of them were working almost on the same time duration. But they never met each other. They did not know that someone in France is working this way or someone in America is working this way. Their theories are completely independent from each other. And that's why we will see that there is a lot of uh, overlapping in their theories also. So his idea of sign is this. He says that there are three parts in a sign. There is a representament, there is an object, and there is an interpretant. Together, these three will make a sign. We will discuss both these types of signs later in the chapter. So now what happens? So Chur says that sign cannot come independently. Any form of sign has to come in a system. Okay. So there is a system of signs. So in order to understand and interpret the right meaning of the sign, we will have to understand the system. Okay. So this is what he calls structuralist semiology or structuralist linguistics or some people call it Sassurian semiology. What is important here is Sassur makes the distinction between lang and parole. Both are French word. Okay. Here lang is the system of language. Okay. That whatever language we use there are certain rules. There are certain rules of the grammar. There are some words there are certain rules of using the language okay so all those rules are called the system of language they are the lang well there is a parole which is the example of individual speech for example i know english language so i have certain rules regulations words in my mind of english language so that is the lang but when i speak English language, that is a particular sentence, that is a particular dialogue utterance, that is the parole. 
of the English language. So parole is different. That is the real thing. But Sashur says we need to understand the underlying system. That is, if you want to comprehend everything very well, especially the system and the rules, then we will have to understand the lang. But our data will come from parole. For example, in English, we have a rule that their subject will come before the verb and object will come after the verb. So this rule is part of the lang. But when you say, uh, give me a cup of coffee, you are breaking that rule because there is no subject. It is a parole. So if you are breaking that rule and still the sentence is grammatical, then you will have to explain how come it is grammatical. Okay. So this is what Sashur also said. That if you want to understand how language works, you will have to understand the entire system. Now all the words we are using, all the signs, they are the system of lang. They are part of the system. So language system is social. Everybody is equally involved in creating the system, in using the system. So it is uh, a social thing. But on the other hand, the performance that is parole is individual. Okay. So I know rules. That is my long. That is my competence. But how I use those rules and words that is my performance that is my parole so in this cartoon uh, this person has a lot of degrees and diplomas so he has a lot of competences but when it comes to actual execution of the knowledge he is incompetent okay so this is where he is talking about the difference your competences your underlying rules are your lang your system and what you actually do is your parole it's like uh, driving. If you want to learn driving, if you learn all the rules of driving, okay, like you buy a guide of driving and you learn all the rules, you mug up all the rules. Will you be able to drive? The rules are there in your mind, but it is a system. In order to execute those rules, you will have to practice. You will have to use it. That is the parole. So this is. We all have different rules. We cannot understand each other. Then parole is individual. That is my style of speaking. My knowledge of the language will be different from your knowledge of the language. You may be more competent than me. Okay. So this difference is the parole. How a particular person make use of the rules which he has in his mind is important here. So how social semiology proceeds? So here his uh, sign, the concept of sign is there. So there are two parts. If you can see, there's a signifier. Signifier stands for the vehicle. Okay. That is, Sashur's theory of sign, which he developed in France, says the sign is made up of a signifier and signified. The signifier is the concept. No, sorry, this is written wrong. The signifier is the vehicle and the signified is the concept. Okay. The relationship between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary. Now we need to understand this thing. Okay. Signifier is, let's say we use a word. Let's say I'm using the word dog. So dog, there are three sounds. Da, o, g. Sound, concept. That is an animal. So in that case, that concept is there. The moment I speak dog, that concept will be retrieved in our mind. Okay. If you are listening to me and I use it will be retrieved in your mind. Okay. Or if you are writing, let's say we write D-O-G, dog. So those letters together are the vehicle. That is the signifier. And with those letters, we convey a meaning. That is your concept, the signifier. Now, what is interesting is, Sashur says the relationship between the signifier and signified is arbitrary. Okay. That is, the relationship is not related conveniently. That is, the society, the conventions of the society decide which sign means what. Okay. 
fine. So that convention is developed. Like when we take birth, we take birth in a particular society. The society already has a language. The society already ha already has the rules of using that language. The society already has the rules for the communication. Those rules might change over the period, but the pre-existing rules are there. Okay, so the, those are the conventional rules. So we accept those conventions by learning the language. Fine. So this is how we learn the language. It is conventionally developed. So same signified may mean different things in different languages. For example, same set. In Spanish, arbol is the word for tree. Or even in Gujarati, we say vruks or jar, which is the signifier for the signifier tree. So in different languages, there are different words. That means there is no natural thing. Otherwise, you must have the same word. So this is the basic idea of the system is socially generated and it is conventional. And as all the conventions change, this system will also change. The language will change. Okay. The same signified tree has di different signifiers across the language proves the point. I give you one more example. In our languages, in most of our languages, the word dog is used as an abusive word. If I tell you you are a dog, okay, I am basically insulting you. It means that I am assigning the characteristics of an animal on you. Okay, so basically it is abusive word, and almost all languages have that. We we say in Gujarati, in Hindi, it is used as an abusive word. Now this is an animal. It has a particular meaning. It has a particular object, but in a particular context, it becomes abusive but on the other hand there is another animal let's say tiger okay. and if i tell you, but conventionally tiger is considered a superior animal it stands for power it stands for courage so if i call you tiger i am basically complimenting you i'm praising you so this is how conventions develop they may be different across the languages but all the languages have all societies have, all the cultures have conventions and the sign system, the semiology is based in that particular uh, conventional system. Okay. I'll give you a few more examples. When we are using signs, they don't come in vacuum. Okay. They are related. Okay. Every sign has some uh, other relationship with other signs. So, Sashur says that this relationship can be divided into two types. First type is called syntagmatic relationship or horizontal axis. Okay. This type is called uh, something like say A and B and C and D. So, this relationship is the relationship of conjunction. And photographed in the verb in English syntagmatic axis the noun phrase that is the subject precedes the verb and the object follows the verb so it follows this particular syntagmatic order now there is the careful astronomer astronomer is a noun careful is adjective the is article now there is a rule in english that careful that is adjective can precede the noun an article can precede noun as well as adjective you cannot change this order. I cannot say careful the astronomer or I cannot say astronomer the careful because I am breaking the order, syntagmatic order. Their relationship is broken. Okay. So, now, the second type of relationship is called paradigmatic relationship or vertical axis. Here, the relationship is option. That is A or B or C or so you have to select okay so here you have selected careful as an adjective but instead of careful you can select diligent also you can say the diligent astronomer it is a correct sentence you can also use attentive you can say the attentive astronomer it is acceptable so as long as we follow the interrelationship of the signs 
we are following the system of the particular uh, language okay and it is applicable not only to the language in the sentence structure it is also applicable to the pictures it is also applicable to the uh, sounds it is also applicable to the uh, films okay like in film or in novel we have an order that there has to be a hero there has to be a villain there has to be a particular goal that hero wants to achieve so this is narrative options you have okay but in case of uh, like any yes i'm explaining and i'll give you example as well don't worry okay uh, yes sakshi and paradigmatic access is one or two or three or four so you can select only one not all of them okay so that is the relationship of uh, opposition that where one comes the other cannot come something is black cannot be white so that is paradigmatic okay but at the same time if something let's say if there is a verb then verb will have an object in the standard transitive sentence so that is syntagmatic if you don't put the object your sentence will be incomplete i give you one visual example mm -hmm. Yes, I'll be giving you PPT and few other uh, reading material as well. Okay, so the example here is uh, when we want to say every morning we wear clothes. So what kind of decision we make when wearing a cloth? Okay, what is our first goal? That why are we wearing the clothes? Where I am going? Let's say I'm going to my office. I'm going to my university. So the requirement is I'll be wearing a formal clothes. Okay. So that is my paradigmatic choice. There are choices that formal, informal, semi-formal, casual. These are the choices available of wearing clothes. Okay. So this is paradigmatic choice. Now I have decided I'm going to the office. I will be wearing formal clothes. So within formal clothes, I have syntagmatic choices. Let's say I'll be wearing formal shirt, then corresponding to that formal shirt, I'll be wearing formal pants, I'll be wearing formal shoes, I'll be wearing a tie. Okay. So these are the syntagmatic choices that if you are wearing a shirt of white color, then with that, you should be wearing a pants of black or blue color. So that is syntagmatic, syntagmatically associated. If I am wearing a white shirt, then my tie should be uh, of some color. Okay. If I am wearing a brown belt, then my shoes should be brown, brown. So these are the choices that is available to us every day. We make all these choices and we go for dinner or for some meal. Okay. So again, there is say, are you taking Chinese food? Are you taking uh, Gujarati food, are you taking Punjabi food? These are all different choices. Now, if you are selecting Punjabi, then what is in Punjabi? Are you taking paratha or chapati? Are you taking paneer or kaju? Okay. Are you taking veg or non veg? These are the syntagmatic choices. Okay. So I'll give you examples. Every day when we select an attire to wear, we make conscious syntagmatic and paradigmatic choices. This is the example here. See, so modern young women and she wants to uh, attend uh, a particular event and she has all these possible choices what will she do okay. what will she select so that will be yes paradigmatic relationship is about opposition and syntagmatic relationship about what syntagmatic relationship is about a conjunction a and b and c and in structure in pragmatic and according to the grammar of a particular language and the choices that we are making of words or signs that is our paradigmatic choices so in different systems you have different signs like in the system of clothes 
your clothes are your signs okay so this girl may select that uh, a formal attire she is going meeting in a office so she will wear a formal okay if she is uh, going to her friend's marriage she will be wearing something traditional or she is going to a party she will be wearing something uh, uh, that is uh, party wear like uh, there could be jeans and t-shirt or some other types of party wears which are acceptable okay there in party she may not go in sari but in uh, marriage she is all every time that we do picture is an example of one such choice is available to young women see all these choices are available what kind of footwear she is wearing what kind of uh, let's say she is wearing or skirt top or kurta or tie or uh, some necklace or purse okay so all these choices are available and as an individual you have to decide as per fairly important okay so there is uh, one more ex uh, here the same thing her selection of a particular order is directly governed by the purpose for which she is preparing herself her selection also depends on how she wants to represent herself if she wants to represent herself as a traditional woman she will select that kind of clothes if she wants to represent herself as a modern woman she will select that kind of clothes if she is going to a meeting and she wants to represent herself as someone bossy someone powerful and formal professional she will select that kind of clothes okay and many a times we break rules deliberately okay like we we are going to the office maybe is a weekend we are going saturday students are not coming so we go in jeans and t-shirt which is not a formal clothes but because we know that it's not an important day students won't be there so you can break the rule for a while okay so we know the rules and that's why we are breaking them okay it is process okay. so sachur's interpretation i'm giving you the definitions now so all the compositions that we are using they are dependent on they are either syntagmatic or paradigmatic so this refers to the fact that signs are put together in some consistent way so syntagmatic is consistency okay that when we talk about a we always a b c okay but when we are talking about k we go with k k g okay so this is the consistency that we are syntactically connecting them while opposite that all the signs are meaningful in the system of signs that a dog is a dog because it is not a donkey and because it is not a tiger or a goat it is different from them conceptually as well as uh, in terms of signifying system okay so we can readily identify no this is a dog okay so as long as that dog is different from other animals we can identify it i give you a very simple example if we have children in our house a uh, young children 2 years 3 years age they have dolls different types of dolls so for us they are all dolls they are not they are not different okay we call them dolls but most of the children give names to their dolls they have teddy bears and cinderella and all so they give them names and they differentiate them based on those names i have my kid is 3 years old he has different types of cars so they are all cars for me or they are all cars for his mother but for him there is a car for the police there is a car for him there is a car for me so he has assigned the names to the cars and he will differentiate that way okay so that is happening in paradigmatic choices that you differentiate and you can readily identify based on that differentiation so when signs are spread out in a sequence over time or have an order in their spatial arrangement and you speak 
the sequence is in time something comes before something comes after or something special arrangement let's say picture something is on top something is on the bottom something is in the middle okay. so that is special arrangement the order is obviously important where do you put it is important this horizontal movement is called syntagmatic how you have put it in horizon that is syntagmatic aspect each six sign the syntag could also be replaced by another sign okay the syntag could also be replaced by another sign which is related to it. having perhaps the same grammatical function replace an adjective with another adjective you can replace noun with another noun okay a similar sound or relating to a similar signified it can it can be a synonyms these sets of uh, related signs are called paradigms when you can replace the talk here going on between these two ladies and there are four different pictures one on the top uh, who is washing and the central picture that is the picture of the product then there is a picture uh, that talks about the after effects of washing that once you wash the clothes you put them to dry and at the time these women are talking about the product and in the end there is a reminder they say remember tide gets clothes cleaner than any other wash day product you can buy so there is an order okay this statement is girl is very brown and there is a lot of weight uh, white color there is blue color so red orange and blue only three three colors are used and the tag line tides got what women want now what women want okay like there has been discussion about that there is literature there are films what we want okay. now they are giving answer that our product is the answer okay every woman wants a tide tide the washing machine or washing powder okay and at the same time they are using the posture of the women in a way uh, which is used for women empowerment okay if you search the women empowerment pictures you will find this kind of picture another thing is this women is fair okay she is young she is modern okay she her hairstyle shows that she is modern she is wearing a particular kind, kind type of clothes okay so modernity is shown by this and when they are using like she is hugging the product that and there are these hearts above it that means she is loving the product Okay, and then they are talking about the uh, importance of the products here. They are reminding us something here. Okay, so all these things are different signs put together, composed together. Now, if I ask you paradigmatically, why did not they use a child, a female girl, for example? A, a girl is there. What meaning it will create? there is no housewife but a girl a school going girl instead of this housewife or instead of this housewife uh, they use an elderly person an old women will have will it have the same meaning that they want to convey so these choices that we are making that there is a modern adult women selected for this advertisement okay so that is a paradigmatic choice instead of that if you use men that is also a paradigmatic choice but this advertisement has selected this particular thing which also imply that in a house cleaning your clothes is the responsibility of the women okay so they go by this conventional idea okay there is some chat yeah why not men is used okay because primarily this is a patriarchal society they think men men think that this is not our work okay and this is 70 years old advertisement okay so paradigmatically they are using the norm of the society at the same time they are reinforcing the norm on the society that this is the job of the women okay only women will have to wash the clothes okay 
and that's why they say what women want okay they don't say what human want or what man want okay fine so this these paradigmatic choices are ideological they are significant we will discuss about it when we look at the advertisements okay next slide see this is a slide this is the concept of the sign proposed by purs c s purs or charles sanders purs so there are three parts in sachur's case there were two signify signify purs talks about three parts one more thing is added that is object when sachur says there is a signifier and signified he says both these things are mental they are in the mind of the user okay the concept and the vehicle are there in the mind while per says the interpreter or interpretant and the representament are mental while object is physical okay object exist in real world so this one more thing is added by pers so this is called pers's semiotic model or pers's sign uh, pers's model of sign or pers's triadic model of sign okay and uh, normally we use the persian uh, term semiotics okay so here what pers is saying is there is an object there is an interpretant and there is a representant representament they together make a sign and there is a process going on of interpreting the sign so here representant is something that does not does the representing okay so this is the representant this is the representing we write the word tree or we speak the word tree that is the representation representament okay the word that we speak or write then referring to the some object whatever the representant calls attention to the actual object so here the object for us is the tree okay because the word that we are using is associated with this particular object and the third point is interpretant eliciting a meaning developing a concept is called interpretant whatever it means to someone in some context now here this is very important thing context okay so sure never talked about context so she talked about the relationship so how context affects for example i am talking about tree so my understanding of tree could be uh, something uh, could be something that we uh, see uh, in the jungle okay so something natural what we see in the object but there is something like family tree also so if historians are talking about your family they, for them the tree might mean family tree similarly there is something related with uh, the language tree okay that there are different associated languages language family plus in semiotics and in syntax we talk about the sentence tree that is we make the rules by drawing the tree in the sentence we segregate that this is a noun there is a branch of noun there is a branch of verb so for uh, syntactician the tree may refer to the that particular syntactic tree so in the context tree has a different meaning which is very important for us to understand the relations among the three dimensions is not static but dynamic it may change whereby one suggests the other in a cyclical manner i'll give you one more example see this is a chair okay now when i say chair this specific chair does not come to our mind though we understand that i am talking about a chair but the chair in my mind may be different from the chair in your mind because you are a different interpreter you have a different experience of the world but at the same time if we say i will chair the meeting in this case the chair word has a very different meaning 
it means that i will head i will conduct the meeting similarly there can be a chair of an institution or of a department okay so someone who, who takes uh, care of the different activities going on in the department and who is a decision maker then uh, there was a kind of punishment in the past the criminal used to be electrocuted on the chair he will die he will he would be given uh, electric shock till he die so that was called condemned to chair okay and now we are all creative people we don't use language like we 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 have get it in the dictionary we always create new meanings suppose i don't want to become the head of uh, the department but uh, by force i was made the head of the department okay so i can say that i am condemned to chair okay that it is a punishment for me okay we use the word chair in so many different uh, understandings so many different metaphorical meanings okay. and this is where uh, the process of interpretation comes important so that is why uh, first talks about one very important concept called semiosis if you see the circle here it is called semiosis uh, it is basically re somewhere related with encoding and decoding but uh, in this case what they are concern is what is there in the mind interpretation is based on the decoding so semiotic codes we use that is uh, there is a system of signs which makes a code so if you understand that code you can decode the signs okay so yes semiotic interpretation is also a type of decoding okay one more example i'll be giving semiosis or sign process is any form of activity conduct or process that involves signs okay wherever sign is involved and there is a meaning making it is semiosis but in modern semiotics umberto eco whose photographs i showed in the beginning he developed another term from that we call it unlimited semiosis that is the meaning making process is continuous even within the same uh, utterance okay it implies a chain of interpretation associated in comprehending a sign okay. so you don't just make one comprehension there will be chain of comprehensions because each signified can lead to a new signifier for example checking a word in a dictionary okay i'll give you one example here say there is a word posthumous you don't know the meaning of posthumous okay so you check the dictionary okay so it defines the word in so many different ways it gives a lot of uh, different synonyms but the most important part is you will have to understand the signifier post something comes after that is called posthumous okay so if you don't understand this signifier these signifiers are uh, incomprehensible so there will be chain of understanding of different signifiers okay and this is what eco calls unlimited semiosis there is one more example what is the opposite of annotated okay something that is very clearly explained is called annotated so it's opposite so if you know the complete meaning of annotated then you can give the correct opposite so if you know the relationship between signified and signified well you can develop the opposition okay so that process of making meaning identifying more signs to make those meanings is continuous one and that is why eco calls is unlimited semiosis it goes on and on and on okay so derida once says that uh, we need to interpret interpretations 
more than we interpret things. So this is where the unlimited semiotics semiosis comes. Interpretations are very very important. Okay. So going further, uh, Peirce proposes many types modes of science. Okay. In fact, throughout his life, Peirce wrote around six thousand pages. Okay. And in his life, he created sixty six types of different signs. But in modern semiotics, we have taken total seven concepts from Peirce's ideas of semiotics. So seven concepts, four we have already seen. Okay, semiosis, representament, interpretant, object. So we have seen four. The three are the types of signs. The first type is iconic sign. If you remember, Sashir says that the relationship between signifier and signified is arbitrary there is no natural connection okay like what uh, shakespeare say that um, if you call rose by any other name it will still remain uh, equally beautiful and smelly okay. so name is unnatural okay but per says that there are kinds of signs where signifier and signified are naturally connected that by looking at the sign you understand the meaning Okay. Suppose there is some language and I put a word in front of you from that language and you don't know that language, then you will not understand because in language those words are uh, conventionally decided. But there are iconic signs. Well, even if you haven't seen that sign or word before, you can identify it. Okay. So such signs are called iconic signs. This is an example of iconic sign. Everybody can identify that this is a sign of washroom. Okay, so that iconicity is there. By looking at the sign, you will realize that there must be washroom somewhere near. Okay, okay. So this is what we call iconicity. The signifier, that is the uh, this particular picture, and signified, that is the meaning that there is a washroom. These two things are naturally connected in our mind. Okay. The other type of sign is called indexical sign. Indexical signs have a concrete and often causal relationship to their signifier. Causal in the sense, okay, there is a cause and the result. For example, if you see a smoke, then you can interpret logically that there is a fire. Okay. So there is a causal relationship between smoke and fire. Okay, so such sign is called indexical sign. I'll give you one example. See, there is this boy who is smoking and the date itself is lighting the cigarette for the boy. And the date is saying, you are welcome son. Okay, so indexical it means that if you are smoking, you are inviting the date. Okay, so this is the causal relationship. Like we see on cigarette packets, there are pictures of uh, the cancer patients. Okay, to make the people realize that this kind of smoking or tobacco chewing will cause cancer. Okay, so that is what we call indexical sign. The third type of sign is symbolic sign. Now, symbolic sign is what Saussure talks about. Okay, that it is non natural, it is arbitrary. There is no direct connection between. Uh, the signifier and signified. They are conventional. Okay, so symbol is a sign that stands for something in an arbitrary conventional based way. Okay. For example, here, this is an example of a bird. We take it as a pigeon and we take this particular picture as a symbol of peace because it is in white and there is a picture of the pigeon. And pigeon is associated with piss. It is symbolic. Okay, there is no natural connection. Okay, there is no proof that pigeon is uh, the peaceful bird. Okay, but we have accepted it, and that is why we see this particular picture as a symbol of peace. Now, what is interesting is most of the theorists say that uh, these are the different types, and all these are different. But what happens that a sign 
can be reinterpreted in all these three different ways. It is based on the interpreter. Okay. Like as we said in the previous slide, that the interpretation is based on the context and the interpreter. I give you one example. Uh, we can see this woman here. She was an actress. Her name is Flora Saini. So if you look at this picture, iconically, this picture is a signifier of Flora Saini, the actress. Okay. It is iconic. Okay. All our pictures are iconic signs. Okay. So this is our first interpretation and very simple interpretation. But like looking at this and if you know that person, you will say, yeah, this is Flora, Flora Saini. But then if you look at carefully, there are bruises on her face. Okay. Now the bruises means she was a patient of violence. Okay. She might have been beaten. Okay. So that is indexical sign. By looking at the bruises, okay, this is a kind of result of a cause. That is, uh, she was beaten. Okay. That was the cause. The bruises, the sign is the result. So this relationship is called indexical. Okay. And this is the indexical interpretation of this sign. The third one, symbolic sign, that this is not just flora signi, but this flora signi is a representation of the Indian women who suffer the domestic violence. Flora Saini was uh, beaten by her husband. Okay. And there was a news about it from which I have taken this picture. So symbolically, there are plenty of women in our country who are being beaten, who are being patient of domestic violence. So symbolically, it represents the condition of women in our society. Okay. So one single picture can be interpreted in multiple ways. And this is why some people say that iconic, indexical, and symbolic are not different signs. They are different modes of interpretation of the signs. Okay, fine. Is it making sense? I'll give you more examples here. See, there are a lot of uh, examples. There are examples of iconic signs. You can see. Uh, this is the icon of human. This is the icon of uh, uh, the direction. This is the icon of a bird. This is the icon of a uh, weapon. Okay. So these are all different iconic symbols. Now there are symbols. Okay. Like if you are confused, then you send this question mark to your uh, friend that I haven't understood. So this becomes symbolic. Uh, dollar is symbolic of currency then this star is symbol of religion judaism this is the symbol of an ngo fine so these are all symbolic associated with some uh, existing uh, meaning and we understand it okay if someone sends you a question mark we understand oh this is a this is confused the person hasn't understood then uh, here there are other signs indexical signs for example in our traffic system if we see red light then it is dangerous to cross the index of heat okay and then we when we use thermometer we the reading of thermometer the temperature uh, is an indexical uh, sign of whether the person is ill or not okay so we use all these signs and we don't have any problem in interpreting them. Okay. Then there are a few more signs again the same Judaism symbol, the symbol of yin and yang. That uh, there is black is black stands for the evil, white stands for the good, and the yin and yang implies that there is good in every evil and there is evil in every good. Okay. Then this is the icon of a cat. Uh, this painting can be. Uh, interpreted in all the three, three different ways. Uh, here, index index is that it says that there was some human being here. 
this is the index and symbol is that that human being wanted to convey some message with this particular uh, print but because we were not present contextually we don't know so we cannot interpret that symbol then this is the symbol of male and female uh, this is the scientific magic symbol um, and stop is iconic sign that is a read and it is written stop okay so you should not go further because it could be dangerous then your signature is your index you sign something and approve that means you have you have given the approval you were present there and you know the rules so that is your uh, indexical sign mm, your emojis are symbolic as well as indexical the way you interpret and the way you present okay there are exercises okay. i put five pictures and with every picture i have put a question i have sent the reference that i have used uh, to prepare this particular you know, presentation i'll be sending the presentation don't worry uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask me the question we can discuss we have around 20 minutes yeah so i'm waiting for your questions thank you for all the nice comments okay uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, no. ask questions yes uh, 